It's Friday with DJ and Brent, and yet another fantastic guest who I believe was recently your date. Yes. And his wife, Katie, didn't mind. She was busy then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I want you to meet somebody that has become a very good friend. His name is Tim Reed, and he's the executive director for the Texas Panhandle War Memorial here in Amarillo. And uh, Tim ran for office a while back, and that's how I got to know him and his ethics and his heart his background, and his wife is a total delight herself, and she's a go-getter as well. So uh, please meet Tim Reed with the Texas Panhandle War Memorial. Well, it's nice to meet you, Tim. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine, Brent. You know, it it must be very rewarding to uh, have anything to do with our nation's finest. And, of course, the War Memorial. How many people... Do you find that may not be quite familiar with this memorial yet in the Panhandle area? You know, it seems uh, that there are a lot of people that don't realize what's here. Uh, They'll come by on Georgia and see the helicopter and the F-100 and the gardens, the memorial gardens, and they think that's all there is to the memorial. Um, And so trying to get the word out about what's inside the building, what used to be the old Randall County Annex, is now the uh, War Memorial uh, Education Center and Museum. Wow. Now, when was this uh, first put together? I mean, well, this year in May, they celebrated their 20th uh, anniversary, but the uh, Memorial Center, it uh, opened in 2020 for about a week and then it closed because of COVID Mm -hmm. and then it reopened towards the beginning of 2021 and had to close right down because the executive director at the time, Perry Gilmore, he got COVID. And so they had to close for a few more weeks. So finally sometime mid 2021, it opened up. So about uh, two years now that it's been open. Wow. Wow. Where can people access online? Uh, this information as, as we go in this interview here. It, it's uh, real simple, Texas Panhandle War Memorial.com. And that's our website. Um, and on there, they'll see a list of events that we have uh, on a regular basis, which uh, as far as ceremonials, we have four events that happen each year here, um, starting in April with Missing in America. And if uh you're not familiar with that. That is where the remains of uh, veterans that have not been claimed have been identified. Wow. And we do the memorial service here outside in the gardens. And then uh, they are escorted down to uh, San Antonio for proper burial. Then, uh, of course, Memorial Day in, in uh, at the end of May. Then our 9-11 uh, first responder ceremony and then we finish up the year uh, probably with our biggest one being Veterans Day. Wow. Well, and then also, Brent, last Friday, we honored, you know, we always honor first responders. And so I had asked Tim a while back if we could honor the Volleys for Veterans Honor Guard because of what they do. Are you familiar with them, Brent? No, I, I'm not. I'm not. But... Okay. Uh, we have a picture of them behind me, and I'm going to get out of this screen so you can see them. And it's unfortunately the picture cut off a little bit, but whenever there's a, a funeral or a memorial, if you've ever had a relative pass away and uh, they were in the armed forces at any point in time, the way I understand it. Anyway, the volleys show up and then they they fold the the casket flag and then they present it to the family. And I wanted us to honor them because to me, they're not the first responders, but they're the last responders. And I know what it meant to me when my dad died, when they came over and brought me my dad's... um, his his casket flag all folded up and they they I did the same thing that other people do I I held that and I hugged it 
And so I'm going to get out of the picture again so that you can see. Tim, why don't you explain who else in the picture? Well, those are, are two of our uh, volleys. Um, the individual in uniform there, that's uh, Doug Messner. And he is uh, he's actually on our board of directors. He's our new vice president and uh, one of the commanders. And he sets up the arrangements for uh, getting the group of men out there for each funeral. And so, um, you know, there it's a it's a special time. I think the first time I went to uh, a funeral where the volleys were was last October. It was the funeral for Cletus LeBeau oh, wow. down in Memphis, Texas. And Cletus yes. was one of the final three survivors of the USS Indianapolis. And so um, as one of my first uh, official events, it was uh, really moving to watch the volleys do what they do uh, and the meaning that they give to honoring our vets properly uh, in their last, uh, I'll say their last moments before they're uh, put in the grave. Yeah, it's very, very special. Very, and very powerful. You know, I'm, of course, at the website right now, folks, you know, Texas PanhandleWarMemorial.com. Very lovely video uh, as well. And uh, but you're saying here to remember every war, to remember every service member, to remember is to honor. And this generation uh, should also carry on uh, that tradition. We, we need to learn how to honor how to honor our veterans uh i'm looking forward to to going this to this war memorial and um very family friendly website where you can see more about it the events and uh wow well wow. come you know you've already had an event war to end all wars uh screening and i believe that you are in the middle of the panhandle gifts uh program Yes, he is. Yes, we are. And, uh, you know, one thing about this memorial, it was thought of, developed, um, and the fundraising took place by all local initiative. So we don't get any federal, state, or local funding. It's all done by uh, individuals in our community and the businesses and grants that are out there. And that's what keeps this going. So this, as I always tell people uh, in the Texas Panhandle, this is your memorial. Even though it's here for us to remember and honor our veterans, it's for them to come in to reflect and to learn uh, those things that are important uh, to us as a as a nation. And one of those is you know, not only our patriotism, but also the sacrifice that it takes, not only on the veterans part, but their families. Because a lot of people don't realize, you know, when our when our soldiers are sent overseas, a lot of times the families don't go with them, especially during wartime. The, the family uh, stays here and they have to hold together uh, waiting and hoping that that loved one comes home. Mm -hmm. And so those are important things uh, that we try to get across to the students that come through here, that there is something bigger than ourselves uh, that requires service and dedication. And the military is one of them. And most people, when I, I tell them that only 1% of our population Thank you. takes the call uh, or answers the call to um, to serve in the military. So, you know, I, you put that into numbers, 330 million people in the United States, only 3.3 million at a time are serving. And just that, that sheer number, um, demands that we respect what they've done because we wouldn't have what we have uh, as a nation if it wasn't for that one percent. Uh, the other thing that I mentioned the other day being it was first responders, I, I had a 32-year career in law enforcement and it's about 0.4 percent of the population that respond to being in law enforcement. You know, there's only there's only a million um whether it's state, local, or federal law enforcement in this country that uh, keep us together, keep us safe, and protect our freedoms. 
You know, on the website, uh, the Texas Panhandle War Memorial dot com is a gift shop as well. Uh, but I also like uh, uh, this gallery, beautiful pictures. What a beautiful facility! Uh, this this is a this is first class, uh, very powerful. You've even, even got a helicopter there, you know. Um, the sculpture with the boots uh, that's very precious, and of course, it's positioned with the rifle. I believe that is is a, a display that is that that is is executed when they're has been a fallen warrior. Um, right, that uh, helicopter, that Huey helicopter, had been, uh, it was manufactured in Amarillo, and uh, former Randall County Judge Ernie Howdeshell had worked on it when it was being manufactured. Then he was uh, responsible for bringing it back. He found it uh, in a junkyard and managed to bring it back to Amarillo and they got it refurbished and he and his sons worked on it a lot on weekends, getting it painted up and everything. And then they brought it and they, they put it over there on the grounds. So uh, there's a lot of history all the way through there. And Tim is awesome for being able to explain it and explain it with a lot of heart. They also have a lot of uh, information meetings on Saturdays where you can be informed and wonderful speakers. So I am so proud that Welcome Partner gets to represent this wonderful institution. And uh, please remember them. Uh, it's a great way, for instance, if someone in your family passes away that was a veteran, give a donation to this memorial in their honor because that's that's like a living memorial to them in my opinion so and uh tim does have a background in law enforcement uh well wow. he is a gift he is a gift you know and, and brent we have the only military chapel here in the texas panhandle a lot really? of people know that and we do uh i just had a funeral wow. two week two weeks ago um we do a lot of memorial services uh weddings as well as promotions uh, in the military and the swearing in of our enlisted happen here in that, in that chapel. Wow. Very powerful. Well, not only do you honor veterans, but you help veterans uh, with your combined arms program that people can read about right there on the website. Uh, I tell you, those of you who are business owners know the value of having a veteran as a part of your employee team, I mean, my goodness, what better leadership experience and training can you have? And um, uh, I believe they said right here that one out of every 10 businesses are owned by a veteran. And tell us about your combined arms uh, program where you you refer, uh, I believe, as a referral service to to veterans for jobs or, or you know, to business owners or vice versa. How, how does that work? Well, it's it's kind of a combination of things. Um, we the actual the individual that was doing that for us had to go back to work, and so we were kind of on uh, on hold with that right now. But I work closely with the Veterans Resource Center, and so when veterans come in or their families, I know to refer them there because they have a, a lot a better uh, connection and services. Uh, so right now, that's kind of where we stand with that. So we we act as a kind of a, a a jumping board for those services to get them connected to where they are. I just had a a veteran drive into town last week, and he was with his wife and his two dogs. And I noticed that they were parked in a in the corner of our parking lot. And I approached them and found out that they had been sleeping in their car. Wow. And um, because their money had run out, they were waiting. Uh, it was on the weekend and they were waiting to get up to the VA uh, to get the services they needed. And uh, just reaching out to the uh, Veterans Resource Center and kind of getting them set up for the weekend. Um, that was something that, uh, one, they appreciated not having to sleep in their car for two days. Wow. And, um, you know, especially with the, the change in weather over the last couple of days. No kidding. Um, yeah. So, you know, you just never know what's going to walk through the door and who's going to walk through the door um, and what help they're going to need. And helping veterans. I mean, wow, doesn't get better than that. 
you know, uh, an alarming number of the homeless community are veterans. Um, you know, I saw a meme the other day. It says, if you have the courage to send uh, soldiers to war, have the courage to take care of them when they get back. Uh, I don't know what your estimation is of the level or quality of care of our veterans currently, um, but it's very, very important that we honor them, but also care for them, especially the ones that are still alive. You know, but is it still an alarming number of veterans that that uh, commit suicide every day? Yeah. And, you know, it was just a couple of years ago that the United States government uh, recognized the White Star families. We have the Gold Star families, uh, those uh, who lost uh, a loved one in in battle. The White Star families are those families who have suffered through suicide whether it's a veteran or first responders. So that is something that is now nationally recognized. Um, and the problem with suicide, whether it's a veteran, a first responder, or uh, a citizen, is the stigma that's attached to that. And hopefully through our outreach and that of the suicide prevention groups that are here in town in the VA, um, we can come to a, an understanding and try to get those families in to get the help that's there for them, because there is help. Uh, whether or not you're the surviving family of someone who has committed suicide, or you're someone who's contemplating it. Um, and the, the veterans groups, uh, including the volleys, um, they are ready to help out a brother or sister who's feeling the, uh, the trauma uh, post-war. And, you know, when I, when I was with the FBI, I was in Iraq, and our complex was right next door to the mental health facilities for the military. And I, I remember, and I, I was in my 40s, and just thinking, uh, as I saw the young men and women that were coming into there, that we prepare them to fight, but we don't necessarily prepare them for what they're going to see. And those are young minds. Um, you know, I was in my 40s. I knew uh, from being out on the street as a police officer and as an agent, some of the things I was going to I was going to come uh, in contact with where these young kids uh, don't necessarily understand that. And we don't train them and prepare them uh, for what they're going to see. Um, on the other hand, uh, that same experience to, to watch the, the, the men and women that are fighting a war at the same time going out and building roads and hospitals and schools uh, better than that, what, what they had found when they hit the ground. Um, a lot of people don't understand our military complex. They just see it as a fighting machine as opposed to what it recreates after it destroys. Wow. And, you know, you know, good examples of that are Germany and Japan and South Korea. Well, we we did the same things in Iraq and Afghanistan, and then we leave it to local control and whatever happens on, on their end. But uh, our our military, no matter what branch it is, um, those active veterans um, are an amazing group of people. And for that alone, we should be um, we should be honoring them. Yes, and uh, you know I, I like to use the uh, the the phrase from uh, George Patton. He said we shouldn't mourn our veterans; rather, we should thank God that they ever existed. Right, because we would not have the freedoms that we have today. Without a doubt, without a doubt, you know here here we are during the holidays. It, it's a, a, a rough time of year for a lot of people, anyway. You know, and of course, uh, unfortunately, you have suicide rates that are that are increased during this time of the year how much more may it be with with uh combat veterans or, or veterans you know struggling with uh ptsd a very real thing uh, I, i'm curious tim um your chapel the only military chapel in the panhandle you said uh what, what 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 ha what is happening there right right now currently at, at the memorial itself? At the chapel, yeah. At the chapel. Well, right now it's empty because okay. I had to move all the chairs into a space that I created a uh, um, a movie theater for to show uh, uh, the uh, war to end all wars. But um, uh, right now we have nothing planned in the chapel. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I, you know, that's something when a family calls and says they, you know, their, uh, their grandfather or grandmother, aunt, uncle uh, had been through the memorial and that's where they want to have their service. Um, my responsibility is just say, yes, tell me what you need, what contacts we need to make and then make it happen so that they can have the service here and then make it meaningful for them. But right now we have nothing scheduled um, in the, in the, uh, near future uh, in the chapel. Mm -hmm. It would be wonderful to see uh, Gold Star families, White Star families, veterans, of course, they, they themselves, to uh, to utilize that chapel. I know I, it, you, you just alluded that it, that it is, um, but that's a very special thing, the memorial itself, but also the only military chapel in the Panhandle you know, I'm 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 curious. Um, how much cr cross promotion uh, d do you enjoy doing with other groups that benefit veterans? Well, uh, the VFW, uh, we're in um, collaboration with them. We just finished a a, a, a deal with the uh, VA and suicide prevention. Um, during the month of uh, September. So we try to reach out to the other groups. Uh, when we do the Gold Star Family Luncheon, we work in unison with Boom, uh, brothers and sisters of our military, and wow. uh, bring those Gold Star families in, recognize uh, them each year. It's the last uh, Sunday in September that we, that we do that. And so uh, that's a, a collaborative effort. We're always looking to work with the other veterans groups, but also other groups um, outside, because it's not, this isn't just um, for veterans. As I said, this is a, this is the people's uh, mm -hmm. memorial to our veterans. And the more we uh, get them involved and understand what we're trying to do, then uh, the better we, are, we would be as a community. Very impressive. And, and of course, I, I even like the fact that you have a, a flag protocol uh, on the website as well. Uh, the folks, did you know there is such a thing? Uh, mm -hmm. it, it is good for your young person to know. I remember uh, uh, before uh, uh, Boy Scouts took a turn uh, that that it, the, the American flag protocol was a very important thing. Very important for a young person to learn. And it's right there, right there on the website. Uh, the flag protocol and and just a really family uh, I, I keep saying family friendly it's a friendly website um but i'm, I'm envisioning military families uh, leveraging this wonderful memorial and also the resources as well um I'm, I'm inclined to go there i'm inclined to, to visit the chapel to to go to the gift shop spend some money locally you know and and support good things one thing about amarillo they sure help each other, and people help people who help people. Uh, you can't beat that. So another fantastic guest, DJ, right here in Amarillo, and and That's folks, right. it's and always looking for important. volunteers. So if if you're thinking of some, if you like history, there's history there, and it's not just on one floor. It goes down to the the lower level as well. There's lots of information there. If you have items you might want to donate, you might want to talk to Tim about that too. Something that would be significant that you'd like to have shown. Wow. There's, there's, this is like a Rubik's Cube. You just think of oh, the War Memorial, but when you look at it, it's a whole world, a whole world. And the idea for education is what really intrigued me when they were getting ready to build this and, and make it uh, accessible for a lot of the schools to go through. And Tim's wife, Katie, works at Ascension Academy. And those kids already appreciate what he's doing over there. So, Tim, thank you for coming into my life several times. And uh, it's such a joy to work with you. And thank you for nominating the volleys. That was that was incredible last week. Thank you so very dearly. Well, thank you, DJ, for uh for becoming my friend, uh, you, you reached out for me at the beginning of the campaign and, um, you know, it's too bad we didn't win that one for Amarillo, but that's the way life you know, goes. I thank the God Lord, for you to do this. I really do. What, yep. The good Lord had other plans and, um, you know, I'm happy with uh, what we're doing. Um, but come, you know, to people that may be listening, come out. We we're going to be adding some new, uh, exhibits, 
Um, when I first got here, I noticed there were no exhibits to women, and I'm going to be uh, working on that. And hopefully February, we're going to have the opening to the uh, um, to an exhibit uh, honoring the women Air Force service pilots, the WASPs. And wow. eight of those eight of those original women were from the Texas Panhandle. And so we're going to be honoring those eight ladies and what they did uh, for World War II. Thank Fantastic you. guest, Tim. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'd love to interview you for another show. Uh, as well uh, with, with your experiences in Iraq. And of course, uh, so grateful that you're working with our nation's finest. You're a part of that demographic yourself. So, so grateful for your service. What's the best way right here and now that we can help our veterans during this holiday season? Yeah. And we sometimes think of it as a trivial thing. Uh, when we see a veteran um, and, it, you know, we, we say, just go up and thank them. Um, they don't expect it, but um, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have what we have today without all of our veterans, no matter what war they fought in. And they they do appreciate hearing that they're thanked uh, because you don't know what that veteran may be going through. Right. And it may be that hello and that thank you where they 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 take a really good look and say, you know what, life isn't that bad. Um, and so don't ever take it for granted that they don't appreciate just a word from the average citizen. A word of encouragement. I was at the prayer breakfast this morning with my team and it was really neat because when they have the uh, song where it, it's the, all the different uh, branches of the military, they play their, their theme song and then people can stand up to honor either themselves or someone that was close to them that was in that branch of the service. And I went to uh, clean off our table and I was walking back and the kids in the ROTC, they were standing up for their branch. And that was really neat seeing that because I looked at their faces. I, I was walking past the ones that are in the Marine Corps here and the looks on their faces, it was incredible. Yeah, those young kids that uh, have dedicated themselves to the ROTC and and that cause bigger than themselves uh, are special are special kids. Yes, and they are. We, we should appreciate them more. You know, one other thing I do want to say, Brant, and for whether it's veterans or first responders, um, there's a hesitancy to seek counseling. And from what they've been involved in, what they've seen, life experiences, and a lot of times they push things under the rug. Um, and I'm going to tell you that that may be one of the worst things that they do. Counseling doesn't mean you're weak. Actually, when you understand some of your weaknesses, that makes you a little bit stronger and able to help yourself in life. And, you know, I know for myself and DJ knows my my background, I grew up in foster care and was adopted late in life, uh, going into uh, a career as a first responder uh, and then going overseas into the war areas. There are many things that I had to deal with. Uh, the thing that helped me the most was, go was going through counseling, getting a good counselor and going through it. 